Welcome everybody, this is Brighter with Herbert. After Tesla's recent Q2 earnings call, we saw a sharp drop in the share price. But is the company really doomed? Or perhaps it depends on your perspective. So today I brought together four brilliant minds from the Tesla community to share with you their takeaways. Each of them will share with you two to five minutes of their thoughts, and they each are pointing out what many are missing. On tap, we have Matt Smith, he's an equity analyst at Halter Ferguson. You can check out their website at rebellionaire.com. We've got Yashu Sharma. He's got a YouTube channel called Hit That Bid. He's an expert in analyzing Tesla fundamentals with his own long-term modeling. He's well known for his stock options, momentum trading advice. Scott Walter has co-founded two robotics companies in the past, and he'll talk about his thoughts on the points about Tesla bot. And finally, we have Brian Wang. Brian is a futurist thought leader and a popular science blogger with 1 million readers per month. His blog, Next Big Future, is ranked number one science news blog. So feel free to pick the person you'd like to listen to first. I'll put the timestamps in the description. Enjoy. All right, Matt Smith here. I want to share a couple of my quick thoughts after the Tesla Q2 earnings reports came, uh, came out last night. Um, so at a high level, I think it was a mildly disappointing report, all things considered. There were some stars in the show, that, which we'll get into. There were a couple of things that I think were worse than expected. Um, but on, on balance, I think I would say it's mildly disappointing. Um, that said, I'm going to get into these details in a little bit about all, all the puts and takes with the quarter. But I just want to start off by saying the long term has probably never been more exciting in my mind. I mean, you've got um, FSD B12.5 going out, getting very like strong rave reviews. Um, seems like they're actually making a huge amount of progress on that. Uh, and then the amount of new compute that they're adding is going to be really um, impactful in terms of how quick new updates go out. Uh, as well as the ultimate capability of both FSD and Optimus. So, you know, Elon kind of laid out the big picture of um, essentially, I think he said $5 trillion was the ARK Invest uh, target valuation. I think that was actually slightly low. Um, $2,900 $2, per share was their target. To me, that is the kind of magnitude of the opportunity that we're looking at if and when Tesla can solve uh, robo-taxis. Um, and then on top of that, I, we do really believe in, in the uh, kind of multiple of that being the upside opportunity uh, if Tesla is actually as successful with Optimus as we think they're going to be. So um, all that's a long way of saying super optimistic about the long term future, but we're going to be very kind of sober about looking at the, the current state of things. So uh, I had a couple of tar charts and uh, tables I want to share. So let me go to share my screen here just to kind of get into those. So this first one is a what's called a waterfall chart. So the street was expecting 62 cents of earnings per share. If you look at the street's expectation on the um, ex, uh, restructuring charges, I think Tesla had guided for greater than $350 million of restructuring expense. Um, it came in uh, at 622, I think it was. Uh, so when you kind of net out the difference in tax affected for um, the amount that was uh, higher of a tax impact relative to uh, Tesla's actual reported uh, or uh, the, what was estimated by by the street and most analysts. Um, you get like a, a one-time tailwind, which analysts would, or uh, one, one-time headwind, which analysts would then back out. So that's why I've added the six cents here as like, kind of like the one-time restructuring charge. Um, on the other end, you had a massive benefit on regulatory credits. So regulatory credits this quarter were $890 million. Um, if you look at the kind of chart of where they had been historically, they were um, much, much more in the $450 million range or so, uh, with a couple of quarters being even lower than that. So if you kind of assume a more normalized uh, amount of regulatory credits, that would be a tailwind that is not expected to be recurring. So you kind of net that out, and that's an $0.08 cent, um, benefit that wouldn't be recurring uh, in future quarters. Um, and so then if you take the the difference between those two, and then what Tesla actually reported at 52 cents, there's an additional seven cent gap. And so that's what I'm calling here core profitability. Um, their auto gross margin X uh, reg credits really disappointed. I think that was the, the bulk of the surprise for this quarter. So a bit of um, bad news there. I mean, if, you, if you're kind of looking at all of this in balance, I, I do think it's mildly negative, even if you add back the restructuring charges and um, assume a more normalized uh, amount of regulatory credits, it still is is worse than we would have expected. Um, and I think there's a uh, reason to believe that we might have continued margin pressure in Q3, given the fact that we're continuing to do some of this uh, low interest rate financing um, and for a greater percentage of the quarter uh, than was the case in Q2. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on and, and um, at Rebellionaire, we're releasing a very detailed video on this, which uh, I'd highly recommend because I think this is a really important trend that um, I actually got convinced of when talking to uh, Larry, Larry Goldberg on uh, Herbert's channel. 
Um, so this is looking at the growth of the um, energy unsatisfied performance obligations. So if you look back Q1 of 2023, the total unsatisfied performance obligations were like minimal. It wasn't really even worth looking into. Um, revenue was a massive multiple of that unsatisfied performance obligation. Uh, but this has actually increased to the, the, a, a staggering level. And all this unsatisfied performance obligation is very likely to become revenue in future periods. Um, there's a, a split here of that unsatisfied performance obligation where you can see uh, there's $2.5 billion that's going to go from this unsatisfied performance obligation into energy revenue in the next 12 months, uh, next 12 month period. So, you know, you've got revenue growing at a pretty rapid rate here. Um, but I think the story that a lot of people are missing is uh, the magnitude of this unsatisfied performance obligation revenue, which is going to be flowing through the books. So um, those are some of the, the big takeaways from uh, Q2. Bit of a mixed bag, if I'm just being honest about the, the kind of current state of Tesla, mostly to the negative. But I think our job as investors is to be very forward looking. And when I do that, when I'm looking at the unsatisfied performance obligation on Tesla Energy, when I'm looking at the quality of the products and the quality of their AI team, the uh, just what they're shipping in terms of quality of, of the software, uh, it's hard not to be extremely optimistic. So we may have some short-term choppiness, but uh, long-term, I'm, I'm very happy to be a Tesla investor, not investment advice. <laughs> All right, so here's my take on Tesla earnings. Obviously, Tesla down 11% today. I don't attribute the entirety of Tesla's down day today to that particular earnings call. The Nasdaq's down about 3.5%, meaning... With a beta of two, Tesla should be down about 7% on any given day. If it's down 11, 11.5%, there's only what, four, four and a half percent of a delta there that we can attribute to Tesla and Tesla earnings, I should say. So Tesla earnings, obviously not great on auto gross margin exempt credits, uh, one of the lowest ones in a while. And especially if you look at Tesla energy, that's the, that's the, bigger, brighter side that we can look into and say 16% of Tesla's gross profits this quarter came from Tesla Energy, 11% last quarter, so up massively so. Tesla Energy is one of those businesses that's kind of boring, not really sexy, not really talked about, but they're chugging along quite well, and the growth that they're showing there is massive. But this earnings call, to me, has to do only with autonomy, only with FSD. I think that's all that really matters. 8.8 now pushes to 10.10. We get some sort of a signaling of the first half of next year for a compact version of car. The market's going to look forward to that for vault, for unit volumes. But on, on, the, on, the, on the day after earnings, what does Wall Street do? Lower EPS again, about 10% lowering of EPS today. So all in all, a, like a net negative for Tesla in terms of financials, the confidence level that we saw for FSD and Elon saying, don't invest in Tesla if you don't believe in FSD, really puts a lot of people into a bind because they were looking at autos and how they were growing there. And now I think people are doing the exact opposite where they're thinking Tesla's never going to grow ever again. If not, Tesla's going to shrink their auto business. The ex Zev credits, by the way, is a point that I don't think a lot of people talk about. But Donald Trump saying essentially he's going to get rid of the mandate does reduce Zev credit potential that Tesla can have um, in terms of in, into the tunes of billions of dollars, right? Every single year. So all in all, Tesla earnings, I mean, the, the biggest thing I would wanted to hear was about the new date for the RoboTax event. And we got that. I know I was on, on Herber, I was on your channel and we we're talking about that. And we we're saying that there's nothing in the shareholder deck. We got our date, all eyes on that date and all eyes on getting some sort of a game plan with revenue with RoboTaxi on that day. That is really the next leg of Tesla's story. They're not building on Giga Mexico yet. It's on pause. And so as it stands right now, it's kind of all eyes on RoboTaxi and 12.5 rollout, which is going splendidly, I would say. But I, the one caveat is I haven't seen on any hardware three cars yet. So soon enough, 12.5, that might be our next big thing. But again, autos is, is it is what it is. It's not amazing. Uh, the 0% financing promo that they have is kind of their saving grace for now. So um, yeah, on to the next quarter, I guess. Um, I would have hoped we would have had 8.8 8 happening in a short matter of weeks, but now it feels like sorta we're in low, no man's land a little bit. And um, if you want more information about my take on XAI and whether Tesla should invest in that, go on my channel, hit that bid. You can find it there. Uh, let's just say 
I am not following the consensus take on this whatsoever. <laughs> take care. Hey Herbert, this is Scott coming to you from Arroyo Grande in California, right next to San Luis Obispo, where we'll be meeting this weekend to discuss a bunch of things, including the earnings report today. And of course, I'm sure you've discussed many of the other aspects of the earning report. I'm just going to focus on what was said about Optimus. Um, not a whole lot of new news. Uh, Elon reiterated a few things that we already know that Optimus is currently being used uh, in production in the factories. Um, we don't know exactly what that is. We know this, the status from a few weeks ago, which seems to have been that it was doing something on, on the battery line. So we don't know if it's doing anything more than just what we already were aware of a few weeks ago. My assumption is if it was doing a lot more, we would have got a little bit more detail. So uh, yeah, it's being uh, used there. Uh, the other thing is he, Elon basically sort of reiterated what he had posted uh, just the other day uh, talking about Optimus production, that uh, starting in 2025, they will do low volume production of probably a couple of thousand units uh, of Optimus to be used internally in Tesla. And that's exciting because a couple thousand Optimi uh, just within Tesla means they have a lot of different operations that they want to do. And then they're talking about uh, you know higher volumes um, starting in 2026 for external customers, and uh, that is indeed a little bit interesting because I don't think they're just thinking of ramping it up for the fun of it. Assuming there's going to be sales, I have a feeling they have already had a lot of discussions with a lot of companies that are interested in using Optimus uh, in their in their factories. Uh, otherwise, they they wouldn't be making those kind of plans. So they're they're probably pretty sure that they've got a solid market for it. And this is also backed up because we've seen indications from uh, other humanoid robot companies that also have order books that are starting to look pretty good as well. So um, no, nothing that's really that surprising based on what we already know, except that Elon basically was able to reiterate going from something that was a simple post to actually saying it in a public forum like uh, earnings call where at, at that point they, they're very careful about the kind of statements they make. But there was one little tidbit I think was rather interesting regarding that, and that is uh, we know where the production for Optimus is going to be, and it's going to be at Giga Texas. It's not going to be in Fremont. It's not going to be in California. So that's like a, a new data point that we have, uh, which means, you know, they've got a lot of room down in Texas to be able to either expand within what they have or use up what they have, but there's already got a lot of room. And plus there's also a lot of other areas to expand. And we don't expect that the Optimus production is going to require a huge footprint, not like, you know, the Cybertruck or uh, trying to do a Model Y or anything like that. So more than enough space, more than enough capability to do it. And it seems that there's going to be more and more consolidation of uh, Tesla production, probably outside of California, where uh, it is already very expensive and very difficult to, to find uh, places to, to work, as well as the, just the overall cost. So they're moving it to a more low cost venue. And it seems like that production, they want to focus there because it was mentioned that uh, Mexico is on the back burner right now. So anyone that was thinking that Mexico would be a site of production of, of the Optimus spot, uh, it's probably not going to be. So, yeah, that's basically my takeaways from what's going on there is that Elon still is very bullish on it. And it certainly said if you think the, um, the potential for Robotaxi is big, uh, his feeling is that the, the potential for Optimus as far as the valuation of Tesla is a couple of multiples of some big numbers that people are already talking about for the um, uh, for being able to do rideshare in, in RoboTaxi. So yeah, that's it. Uh, looking forward to, to meeting you uh, IRL in real life uh, this weekend, Herbert. And uh, yeah, until then, this is Scott talking to you from a deck looking out over the Pacific back there somewhere in Arroyo Grande. So. See you ever see everyone on, on Saturday. Bye now. Hello and welcome to Next Big Future. I'm reacting to yesterday's uh, Tesla Q2 earnings call. Um, there's plenty of analysis about the um, various financial things, but the only thing that matters is the AI and the energy. Those are the only things that matter from, from that uh, call. So let me just quickly um, review that with you. Cybertruck is also um, um, uh, something else that's going to matter. And I've discussed that in videos before the earnings call. And um, just a reminder that, you know, I expect that to continue to grow and have some impact. Elon said that energy would triple, uh, could double to triple in 2025. So that means it can go to 90 to 120 gigawatt hours. Um, and also F50 will be introduced into Europe and China. That'll be a huge differential. 
and basically they're going all in on robo taxi. Um, so let's uh, just go over the uh, my updated energy projections now um, because the Tesla factory can triple the uh, amount of energy um, that that combined with Lathrop. That means you can go to at least 120 gigawatt hours, which means that people who said, oh, you're projecting more than 40 gigawatt hours per factory. Yes, each of the factories can go to 80 gigawatt hours, perhaps more. Um, the amount of dollars per gigawatt hour is, is less, about the $1.1 million per um, gigapack. Uh, megapack, which is um, 3.9 uh, megawatt hours. So that works at about $260 um, million dollars per, per gigawatt hour. Um, so readjusting the numbers of increased uh, gigawatt hour potential um, for the out years and also removing the cap on that. People say, oh, you, you can't have um, you know 360 uh, gigawatt hours out in 2028. Elon mentioned that there's this very large demand and they are software differentiated on the mega packs. So projecting that out, you know, the numbers look really, really good. You can get to $2 trillion valuation from uh, six large 120 gig uh, gigawatt hour per year uh, mega pack factories. And each of the mega pack factories at 40 gigawatt hours only costs uh, $400 million. So a 120 gigawatt hour factory would only cost 1.2 billion versus the $10 billion for a uh, large car factory. He, Elon also mentioned uh, distributed AI inference again, that using the AI5 chip, and I had an entire video about that, and also that Tesla bots would scale to uh, large volumes in 2026. They'd have a few thousand in 2025. And then my projection from before was you can get to 100,000, perhaps more Tesla bots in 2026. And that seems like a you know, conservative projection now. So then the number of EVs, the number of test bots can scale to the millions. And if you're having a distributed AI revenue of $5,000 per chip, maybe one per Tesla bot, then you get these large billions of dollars of revenue in 2026 from inference. $15 billion if you have $5,000 per chip, uh, $3 billion from $1,000 per chip. And that would be uh, incremental, nearly all profit revenue. If you can get to 2 million bots, 8 million cars, you know, 10 million total, looking at $50 billion in 2027, 10 million. So this would be a huge contribution. And they're also using the hardware four chips um, for their, combined with Dojo and NVIDIA clusters in a, the computing, supercomputing centers. Elon tweeted that out after the call that looking to have 100,000, H100, or almost 100,000, H100, 9,000. Combined with forty thousand um, AI four chips and and increasing, and then uh, a, a large contribution of Dojo chips. So again, it's all Dojo, Robo Taxi, and Tesla Bot, um, and and distributed AI. So those are the main uh, parts of the future for Tesla. And that future will happen quite soon, and also energy. So those are the 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 main aspects of what's going to happen. The near-term future on that was basically a lot of it was confirmed um, that they're on track to that in the in the call. Um, and that basically that that's it. So we'll, we'll do longer videos discussing the AI and robotics and stuff, but the Q2 call was confirming that uh, Tesla's AI story is getting um, more real and the energy uh, story is virtually um, unlimited, as Elon said. So talk to you next time. Bye.